This topic is about diagnostics in regression. We'll talk about how we use diagnostic plots to visually check the assumptions of regression, how we can use R to examine those diagnostic plots, and how common quality assurance and quality control benchmarks are used in the agriculture and natural resources disciplines. Now, we'll talk a little bit more about the assumptions of regression. First, let's take a step back. We know that we can partition the variability of a regression using an analysis of variance table. And so this is really important because it allows us to assess where the variability comes from and how much of it is described with our regression model. We can also conduct a hypothesis test and calculate confidence intervals for the beta 0 and the beta 1 coefficients. This helps us know how well beta 0 and beta 1 are. That is, how well do the intercept and the slope values perform for our regression equation. And we know that one number that can tell us the amount of variability that's explained by the model is r squared. An r squared value close to 1 indicates that the model explains a lot of the variability inherent in the data. An r squared closer to 0 indicates there's no relationship between what you're measuring and what you're seeking to estimate. But let's take a step back and think about what are our assumptions? And how do we know the regression equation that we're doing, or the model that we're creating, is any good? So, we'll talk about the assumptions in regression. Now, a quick pause. One of my favorite questions for PhD students in their qualifying exams or their prelim exams is to ask them about the assumptions of regression. And so if you're a PhD student, you'll be especially interested in this slide. The first assumption says that the means of the population under our study are linear related through an equation. And that equation looks like this. This is really the equation for a simple linear regression. We're interested in some value mu sub i and we know that the value beta 0 might represent our intercept, and beta 1 our slope, and that slope is tied to some value x that we think might influence mu sub i. And so i can range from 1 to n number of observations in our data set. A second assumption is what we call the assumption of constant variance. That is, each population has the same standard deviation. Now, to write this out, we could say that sigma is equal to the sigma 1, sigma 2, and sigma n. So we can say that the population has a constant variance for all levels i, 1 through n. The third assumption is that the response measurements are independent normal random variables. This is the assumptions of normality. And so we could write normality, or again, write how it's distributed normally, if we're interested in something called y sub i, we can say that that's distributed with a normal distribution with mu sub i equal to our regression equation, beta 0 plus beta 1 times x, with some standard deviation associated with it. Another assumption, the last one, is that the variables, for example, x sub i and y sub i, are measured without error. Uh, this is a really important one, and it's not always one that we think of. But if you're going to create a regression equation, you need to have your variables that are going into that regression equation measured without error. So this is a useful application and a useful reminder that before we do a regression, or after we see the regression output, we need to test the assumptions of that regression.